Hello everyone and welcome back to another NAND DT tutorial. In this tutorial we will be looking at the calculation of free binding energies for protein ligand systems using NAND-D. The main applications of molecular dynamics include protein structure determination, looking at protein folding pathways and protein dynamics, finding out information about large atomic systems such as the behaviour of the HIV capsid or the ribosome, and most notably drug design, the study of active sites and the determination of free binding energies. We have looked at the former in my earlier tutorials, where we covered protein simulation and the generation and simulation of protein membrane systems. We have also looked at the parameterization of novel residues such as ligands and the importance of having accurate parameters and experimentally verifying them. In this video, we will address the latter. Free binding energy is the change in potential energy from an unbound ligand and protein to their bound state. This is important because it signifies the strength with which a ligand will bind a protein. For example, we can compare a set of ligands and their free binding energy with a specific protein which allows us to see which of those will bind that protein the best. For this reason, this technique is very important in drug design. However, accurately determining free binding energies is notoriously difficult and the skill of being able to pick the right method for this calculation as well as carefully carrying out that method is a valuable one. The process of drug screening starts with the determination of the shape and features of the binding site of the protein. Then, using an algorithm such as the MQL web server, hundreds of potential drug candidates are chosen. They are docked into the binding site, at first using a rigid and then a flexible docking method, and any unfit candidates are thrown out. For example, using the Haddock web server or auto dock Vena. Finally, when you have a smaller collection of drugs that could be effective binders, you can carry out a free binding energy calculation using methods such as MMPBSA, LIE or thermodynamic integration. Theoretically speaking, the simplest way to work out a dissociation constant, which can be used in a similar way to free binding energy, is to carry out thousands of simulations and see how many of those times the ligand will bind. However, not only is this method computationally expensive, but it only works for weak binders, as on a classical molecular dynamics timescale of sub microsecond. A strong binder will bind in every single one of those simulations, making this method pretty much obsolete. Linear interaction energy or LIE functions on the principle of this equation, where free binding energy is calculated as a difference of energy between the bound and unbound states of the ligand. You can run multiple simulations and manipulate your average energy values to get a more accurate result. This method is not that accurate as things like the energy of the solvate can skew results and if your ligand's parameters are inaccurate, these inaccuracies can build up. However, if carried out carefully, this method will allow you to compare the free binding energies of a set of ligands and is therefore at least somewhat applicable. Here is a link to a good tutorial on using LIE. I will put all links in the video description. Another common method is MMPBSA, Molecular Mechanics Poisson Boltzmann Surface Area. A similar method in that it takes the idea of the difference in energy between the unbound and bound state of the protein. And to make up for calculation errors, it further splits up the situation into a thermodynamic cycle. This is a recurring theme that you see in most free binding energy calculation methods. MMPBSA further approaches the contribution of each of these calculated energies in various ways. Here is a link that describes those approaches and explains MMPBSA further. The equation for the dissociation constant is taken and rephrased like so. P1 is the probability of the protein binding the ligand and P0 is the probability of the unbound state. The logarithm of the ratio between P1 and P0 can be related to the work required to extract one ligand from its bulk environment and bring it into the binding site, and vice versa. Assuming a situation with only one protein surrounded by n number of identical ligands, 
we rephrase the equation like so. First, with ligand number 1 in the binding site, normalised by all the ligands in the bulk, then the same for ligand 2, and all the way up to ligand number n. We can factor this out and get the equation where one ligand is in the binding site, normalised by all the ligands in the bulk, times by a factor of n. An introduction of a Dirac function and a final rearrangement of this equation leads us to this final expression, with x signifying bound and x star signifying unbound states. This ratio of integrals is not very useful in the context of molecular dynamics by itself, but we can decompose this situation into a thermodynamic cycle of separate states, the corresponding contribution of which can be calculated from the free binding energy derived. To do this, there are two possible approaches, a geometric or an alchemical one. Here are two links, one to a good NAMD tutorial that discusses this method in detail, and the second is to a very good lecture about this subject. The alchemical route itself is composed of multiple methods. For example, methods based on histograms, where you have one degree of freedom which you can change and then compare the probability of finding your system at that particular value of your degree of freedom. For example, the dihedral angle of a ligand. Non-equilibrium work simulations, where for example, Titan was repetitively stretched, the energy values measured and plotted. Eventually, you would get a Gaussian distribution, the peak of which, where the energy value converges, would most closely resemble the real-life value of that energy. Perturbation theory, or free energy perturbation, a very common method where you perturb or slightly alter values in your potential energy calculation method or in the parameters. You eventually derive the relationship between these and your free binding energy. Another method is measuring the, the derivative and integrating it, where you measure a force along a reaction coordinate for example, the force between the molecule and protein center of masses, and then you average that force. The average of the force, if set up correctly, will roughly equal the derivative of free binding energy. The geometric route consists of the introduction of geometrical restraints, such as loss of conformational, positional, and orientational entropies, for example, restraining bond angles. Contribution to the free energy of which is determined on a simulation by simulation basis. This method is sometimes called adaptive biasing force and can be implemented in NAMD using the so called Kolvars module. So, let's have a look at an implementation. I used the MQL web server to scan a database of ligands and see which ones fit the binding site of my chosen protein best. I registered an account for free, I went to hit identification, structure-based virtual screen. You can select basic property filters, for example, minimum and maximum values for the amount of chiral centers or rotatable bonds in your ligands. You can select the amount of ligands to be sampled randomly from the database, and of course the protein that you're going to be working on. I chose Jack1, which was tyrosine protein kinase. You select it and then you press run. Once the program finishes running, you get a result of 100 conformers which best fit your protein active site. I chose the first one that I was given. You can visualize its pose, you can look at the protein surface, for example, you can decide Ah, this particular functional group is an H-bond donator. I want to change the structure of my functional group on my ligand slightly because of that. So you could copy the NQL ID, go to lead optimization, one click docking, paste the MQL ID, and refine it and change it slightly and then see whether you get a better docking value. You can even go to toxicity checker and check if your chosen ligand is toxic. It seems that R1 was not registered as a toxic substance. Having done that, go back to your collections, go to your virtual screening and download a PDB file 
that contains your ligands bound to your protein by pressing download pose. Having done that, I separated the ligands and protein into separate PDB files and generated parameters for my ligands using Charm GUI. I generated PSF files and also recombined the two structures into one final PDB and PSF file. I decided to use a rather rudimentary implementation of LIE to calculate my free binding energies. I then ran two simulations, one with the ligands in a vacuum and one with the ligands bound to the protein in a vacuum. The ligands are complex. For the former, my input script was this. And for the latter, for the complex, my inputs, my input script was this. I plotted the van der Waals and electrostatic energy for just the ligands in both of these systems using NAMD energy plugin for the MD. If you want to know exactly how to use that plugin, feel free to look at the LIE tutorial, the link for which I will attach in the video description. I used Excel to plot these. So here is my graph and the averages for the electrostatic and van der Waals energies for the bound state and for the electrostatic and van der Waals energies for the free state. I generated an image of my protein ligand complex with VMD and I used alpha and beta values that I took from the LIE tutorial which also quoted a paper. Now I would say that I'm pretty happy with my end result. It's a negative value which means the, the ligand would rather be bound to the protein than in the free state, so that's a positive. Um, it's also not too low, it's a value within reason, it's very believable. And considering that the system used in the LIE tutorial slash paper was very similar to the system that I used, it is nice to see that our values weren't that different. Another way of calculating free binding energies quickly and easily using NAMD would be to use the BFEE VMD plugin that implements a geometrical round. By searching BFEE VMD plugin, head over to the ACS Publications website to download the code and the PDF instructions for installation. Here and here. You can follow these instructions to the install BFEE. -E. The plugin reads and output files from a simulation, a PSF, coordinate, velocity and XSC file. You set your temperature, you add all the parameter files that you used and then you select the name of your protein and the name of your ligand or whatever identifying keyword that you would like to use. The plugin then generates ready to run simulation files with input files and call bars files all already configured, so you can press generate inputs. As you can see here, I have used BFEE to create files for my photochlorophyllite oxidoreductase complex. I unfortunately lack the computational power to run these output files, as for a lot of them the amount of time steps required are in the millions, um, but I'll leave that up to you. So having finished running the simulations using the files that BFEE would have generated for you, you can go to an Analyze, you can load in PMF files, um, select your force constant, and BFEE will compute the binding free energy for you. The final thing I would like to mention is to make sure that you check out the free binding energy tutorials on the NAMD website. These contain a great deal of information and cover the topic much more rigorously than I have done in this video. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.